Hello again, most esteemed viewers. My name is Jekyllstein Gray, and welcome to another episode of Jekyllstein Gray Plays The House in Feta Morgana. Um, so this video might look a little different. If that's the case, it's because I'm actually trying, I'm recording this in 48 frames a second instead of 30, which is what I was doing before. Um, I don't know if this will, like, look any different. Gonna turn the audio down a bit. Um, and, because it's so much, I just thought it would be interesting thing to try especially considering how much of this game is just you know the the previous videos have had really small file sizes because it's um um because it's mostly you know still images because you know visual novel um so we shall let's we're let's see how it how it ends up looking um uh, as always with these types of experiments like feedback in the comments um would be appreciated um, I just, I also noticed, you know, I think it was, like, right after I finished recording the last video, like, the key sounds when you, like, scrolled over an option. Um, we might be finishing episode one today, depending on how much time it takes. Um, and, um, something, one other thing. Oh, yeah, um, one esteemed viewer pointed out that, um, that this game is, um, one esteemed viewer pointed out that this, that this game is uh, it's hard to it's hard to hear it's hard to it's, it's pro anyway um i was the headphones audio still still sounds really loud from my perspective uh one of the one of the same viewer mentioned that the game story really only picks up um after a um and uh sorry the, i'm trying to read the screen and talk at the same time um and not but not talk about what's on the screen um so they they mentioned that uh, this game really, story really only picks up later, which if anyone can can get through a story, you know the beginning of a story that's pretty eh, um, to get to the really good stuff. It's the guy whose name is a portmanteau of um, Jekyll of Henry Jekyll, Victor Frankenstein, and Dorian Gray. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's actually start analyzing this game. So um, there's something unusual. You're not being punctual. Maybe next we'll go a whole month without rain. <laughs> Do have mercy on next year's crop smell. Okay, I kind of like this priest. Um, assuming he's not being a creep to um, uh, Nell, Nelly. You are verbalized, father. So does something nice happen, huh? You look like you're in good spirits. Uh, do I know uh, nothing? Something did happen, didn't it? It's all over my face, isn't it? People prefer an open book to a face of stone. I feel like in my, my social interactions oscillate between me just being... A, a face of stone or me being an open book um so it is that being said i might be wrong about that because i don't know what it's like to talk to myself well not i don't know what it's like to talk to me that, that's a better way of phrasing it to be another person talking to me um people may prefer it but it's not a good trait to have for social engagements what <laughs> not the kind of engagements you'll be having anyway that and that's why i hate going to parties and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, don't look so dejected. For now, at least, there's nothing wrong with that. So tell me, what has you in such a joyous mood, Mel? You torment me so, father. We've taken on another maid. You know how that goes, right? Someone new comes and things get lively for a while. All the excitement has gotten to me, that's all. Oh yeah, that is that is exactly the line I would use if I was in that position. Oh, <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? No reason, no reason. So what family does the little lady come from? Oh, uh, I don't actually know. I'm still curious, was that actually a thing? Did, like, lesser noble families send their kids to be, like, butlers and maids? Um, to other, um, to other, um, sorry, to, to other, um, uh, households? I still can't imagine that happening, uh, but I might be wrong. I was going to ask her, but I missed my chance. Father's returned home, and I can't speak to Mother. I see. She's got your eye, hasn't she? Yeah, she has. The truth is, you're more than just interested in her, are you not? What? No, I... <laughs> you truly do enjoy tormenting me. Well, I should be getting home now. Mel. Yes? Make certain you find out where she's from. If you're genuinely interested in her, 
It's your responsibility to determine if she's actually suitable for you. Right! Because if there's one thing that's been important in a romantic partner, it's what family they come from. Not whether you're compatible or whether you bring out the best in each other or all that nonsense, you know. You know, make sure that your kids have the maximum political viability. Thank you and excuse me. Doesn't matter if she's from in the same family or not. No, I'm not in love with her. I'm just interested. This isn't love, no. I think that's interesting. I wonder, like, my interpretation of the character is that he was like... He, he was like, it doesn't matter if she's from an esteemed family or not. And then immediately was like, oh crap! What a, like, what are the consequences if, if, um, if, if she's not from an esteemed family? Oh boy, I better, you know, avoid this. It's me we're talking about. Besides, I hardly even know her. Sire, blessed young sire, alms for the poor. This beggar again. The same beggar as before. I don't think he's moved since then, but he looks skinnier than last time. This is one of those really... I feel like a lot of times in stories when you have this really specific thing that keeps occurring that doesn't seem like it should matter, it probably matters. From my recollection, it doesn't, though. I should give him something while I still have the chance. Alms for the poor, have mercy. Sorry, but this is all I have to give you. Ah, thank you very much. Blessings upon you. May the Lord bless your soul, young sire. Thanks. I feel bad for him, but that's just the way of the world. Oh yeah, that's easy for you to say. It's easy for you to say, you fucking aristocrat. Oh well. You fucking fat aristocrat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the sun shone fiercely down on the town that day. As was characteristic of the area, cloudy days and rain were frequent during the season, but the sun almost always took the stage the day after a storm. The cathedral standing in this tall in the center of, the, of town, the stone paved streets uh, clacking with the pleasant sound of footsteps, the people peering out from beneath awnings to look about the sky. In Mel's eyes, it was as if they were all blessed by a divine light. I swear it must be heaven's light. Oh boy, that, that was really bad. I'm sorry, Steam viewers, and also very, loose, very loosely connected tangents, so sorry about that too. Um, however, not everyone living in the same land was equally blessed. In fact, the blessed were far, were far never by the forsaken. Yeah. Feudalism and capitalism tend to do that. Um, even if the time would later come to be referred to as the Golden Age. I mean, yeah, that's true of most historical, historical Golden Ages. Elsewhere, back at the mansion, Neil was causing trouble for the weirdly not capitalized Abigails. I'm still caught up on that. On a whim, just like what he thinks freedom can be um, given or taken on. Like, <laughs> this is... I, I see the littlest, like, connection to far-left politics, and I'm like, must bring that up. <laughs> on, a, on a whim, he, uh, she had decided to redecorate her bedchamber, so she had gathered the maids and put them to work, shedding orders and demands and complaints. She had not summoned only her personal servants, but others as well, including the white-haired girl. What the fuck, Nelly? Okay, I have a... I actually had a title for this episode in mind, um, which I might say what it, it was, considering like whether or not we get to her, but I'm not, I might now be replacing it by Nelly thinks freedom is something that she can give or take on a whim. Uh, anyway, no, not that. How many times must I tell you? The tapestry goes by the door, and I don't like the carpet. You're making them change the carpet? <laughs> hey, you put the ugly vase there. Nelly appeared to be rather irritated, and then it was the servants who bore the brunt of her frustration. Yeah, that tends to be how it goes. Although, though they found this similarly vexing, none of them showed it. It was a girl who spoke her mind, or very particular to that time in history. Well, yeah, you know, speaking your mind is great, is a, is a good, is a thing that should be encouraged, but you shouldn't be, there's a difference between speaking your mind and ordering people around, you know. Um, if these people had truly been free, you know, they could have just said, you know, I'm sorry you don't like the carpet, you know, maybe if you ask me, I will help you, but this is ultimately on you. <laughs> like, if you want to, if you want to change the carpet, you change the car. You change the carpet. Anyway, um, women of the golden age were so vivacious, in fact, that it inspired parody and satire in foreign countries. That, I feel like that might have been true of the Elizabeth, uh, the Elizabethan era, um, particularly because of Queen Elizabeth. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but no matter how hands-off her parents were, had Nelly been born a generation earlier, or a generation later, she likely would not have been able to act so free-spirited. That day, however, Nelly did not seem to be her usual self. She always spoke her mind, it rarely, um, 
went beyond being childish, childishly adorable. It's unusual to see her in such a foul mood, not even a smile on her face. Again, it's okay to be in a foul mood and to express your being in a foul mood, but you shouldn't have underlings who need to deal with you in, in your foul mood. Uh, get rid of all of it. The garbage of the chair, the desk is also ugly. Don't we have anything better? You don't have an order. I haven't made. You can do that much, can't you? Hurry up and remember. What the fuck, Nelly? Um, having only arrived that morning, the white-haired girl was unsure uh, what she was supposed to be doing, kind of in the middle of a flurry of maids and furniture and fabric. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, she just frantically scrambling Abigail's with her eyes and made attempts to to help, but not not being familiar with the work, she only ended up getting in their way. She probably felt that everyone would be better off with her not in the room. So when the maids ordered to get new furniture made... So when the maids ordered to get new furniture made their way out of Nelly's room... That's a uh, convoluted sentence <laughs> a bit. Um, she attempted to follow them. You hold on a second. You. Yes, you with the white hair. However, Nelly stopped her before she could take her leave. What? The white-haired girl turned back bewildered to find Nelly smiling at her. The corners of her mouth tur uh, turned up into a self-assured grin. There was no trace of timidity or uncertainty in her demeanor. Her flaxen eyes seemed to... What, this is not just hair. Like, the, the flaxen is a common thing. Also, I, I, I feel... I just feel the need to mention this. I don't know why now. Um, this is... I, I realized, like, earlier when I was recording the earlier episodes, like, this is, like, straight-up Bishonen. This is just, like, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It's the only other Bishonen um, media I know. Um... What's the exact opposite of the white-haired girl? He <laughs> he. Oh yeah, that's. I keep forgetting. This isn't in, in an un a detached omniscient narrator. This is um. This is this isn't God from the the P scroll. This is God from the J scroll or whatever. The whatever one he's not he's not distant and omniscient in. Um, I wanted to talk to you actually, but Mother uh, never was the was one to share. I asked her to trade maids, but she wouldn't have it. Trade? You mean for he <laughs> he? Which? That's why I decided to completely redecorate my room, because I would need some extra hands. Well, then why did you need... You, okay, sure, but did you need to be such a dick about it? <laughs> but why? Because mother and father refused to tell me anything. Why is that? Who are you exactly? Where did you come from? Tell me, what house are you from? I... I... Why can't you tell me? If we took you in, it must, you must be from a fairly decent family. As a member of the Rhodes family, I have a right to know. Do I not? Yeah, um, see... Whatever name is attached to your family should not have any bearing on whether on whether people listen to you or not. You can't expect me to welcome a girl into my home who won't even tell me where she came from. I don't know anything about you. I haven't seen you at any parties. I'm I came from another country. Another country? What country? Somewhere very, very far away. Assuming I I I'm not this is not like a a spoiler, but I think I think considering what I think I know about her, yeah. I mean, time is the you know the fourth dimension is can have some very different um, can have very can be very far away. I don't know how to phrase that. Oh, north of here, east, west, south, um, south. It's south of here. Across the sea to get here, which is why I've never met before. Hmm, how far did you have to travel then? How many times did the sun rise and how many stormy nights did you face? Uh, innumerable days and nights we sailed, heading further north. Huh. So tell me, uh, Lady Nelly, this is the most wonderful painting. Holy crap, my voice, voice cracked again. She just tried to brush me off. I won't let her get away that easy. Painting, it's in my room. So of course it's wonderful. You hate everything about your room. That's what you just, anyway. But that, that one's especially so. You're both adorable. You, La Na Lady Nelly and Nord, and you, Lady Nelly and Lord Mel. Hee <laughs> hee. How old were you when it was painted? Huh? Ah, that painting! Goodness, yes, you have a good eye for art. Hee <laughs> hee, it is magnificent, isn't it? This was done when I was four and Mel was seven. You see, we're standing next to each other, holding hands? Aw, oh, that's cute. I was too young to remember it very well, but Mel looks like he was really embarrassed. I mean, how long did they have to... How long did they have to stand there for? Jesus Christ. But standing there like statues makes for a boring painting. Okay, I'm, I'm actually seriously impressed. For whoever got a four-year-old and a seven-year-old to stand still long enough for a painting to be done. Explained brightly. Having completely forgotten that she was pressed up against the white-haired girl, she did a little twirl, stopping to face the portrait. The many paintings lined the walls of her room. Nellie was most fond of the one of her and her brother. Two darling siblings standing side by side, her older brother smiling kindly, and the younger sister 
sweetly tilting her head, her cheeks the color of fresh baked apples. It's like the very embodiment of their happiness. A painting uh, lays the subjects bare, you know. Fortune and misfortune, happiness and sorrow, and shrined on canvas for all to see. Yeah, it depends on the painting, and frankly, it depends on the honesty of the of the painter. Uh, and this reflection is not merely limited to the point in time it was made, either. Did you know, Master, that paintings... Oh, <laughs> I, I actually said that word <laughs> that I don't usually like to say. Go figure. Uh, that paintings are alive. They're drawn with a brush over an extended stretch of time, unlike photographs, which capture a singular moment. So photographs are a thing in the time that this is being narrated, and I'm assuming, despite this game's weird historical, you know inaccuracies i'm still assuming that it's not i'm still assuming that it's not um that that it that it, photographs are not a thing in this game's version of 1603 oops um uh the two have their own individual merits but a photograph is still well a painting moves i'm sure um i'm sure uh, claude monet would would very much like this assessment of painting Portraits reveal, portraits reveal both the past and the present state of those they depict. Hehe. <laughs> Mel and I have always been close. I would sing songs for him and he would teach me about all sorts of things. He's so smart. Nowadays, Mel hardly even goes on walks with me, making excuses like, I'm an adult now. Ah, oh, I'm an adult now. I can't do everything, you know, that we used to do as kids. Or I don't want to do everything we used to do as kids. Oh, it was such a such a weak excuse. Um, but we used to spend a lot of time playing together in the Rose Garden. I see. The white-haired girl normally had difficulty smiling, but her lips naturally curled upward as Nellie reminisced. A vision of the two happy siblings had probably swelled up in her mind. And I imagine there was a fa faint trace of envy in her heart as well. Lady Nellie, you love Lord Mel quite deeply, I see. Yes, of course I do. Mel's smart, and he's studious, and he's incredibly kind. For her birthday, he gave me this wonderful rose necklace. The jewelry shop he got it from is famous because even the royal family makes commissions from their workshop. So are these people like one step below the royal family? Um, are they like, you know, uh, like in... I just actually, a bit before recording this, played a, bi a big bunch, a big chunk of Crusader Kings. Um, were they like dukes to kings or whatever? Or kings to emperors or whatever? Anyway. Um, in order months in advance. Just for me, he he, he's a prince. Oh, he he. He's pretty charming, wouldn't you say? That's why I call him my prince. But you know what? Mel is a terrible dancer, and he still hasn't got his feet on the ground yet, and he's so bad at interacting with girls. Yeah, all these all these things are um, I, I can relate to about uh, Mel. Um, uh, so there's no one else who would say that about him. He's quite the gentleman. I assumed women would be drawn to him. Gentlemen? Have you met Mel already? This morning, briefly. Uh, that reminds me. Mel seemed to know about her, too. Hmm. This is interesting. Um... Well, I, there is one, okay, I, I do want to editorialize, well, nah, never mind. Uh, it's not, it's too, it's too much, and it's probably, it's definitely going to get this video demonetized if I ever reach, like, a thousand subscribers and, and whatnot, and it's, nah, it's a, a discussion for another time. Um, so what do you think about Mel? I am, as I said, he's a gentleman. Suffice it to say... That having good qualities in the abstract does not necessarily make you, like, super, you know, attractive. Both on a romantic and a, you know, just a general social level. Um, speak, speaking, well, speaking from experience, you know, on the latter and from other people's, what other people say about me on the former. Um, well, that's not what I meant. Uh, that's not what I mean. Don't, don't, don't think I'll let you go with... Wait, get away with putting any funny ideas in his head. What? That was too trusting. He's pure of hearts. So I won't stand for you trying to take advantage of him. I would never. So you say, but you actually want you actually want to get close to him. I wouldn't dream of it, Lady Nelly. He is a man far beyond my reach. You're planning on doing anything, are you? Not at all. You don't have any romantic feelings towards him, do you? What? Um, well, do you? I have no romantic feelings for him lady nelly yeah that's a that that pause speaks speaks volumes um and you won't develop any i will not with that nelly gave a wide satisfied grin even though one has no way of knowing um how another truly feels or how they might feel in the future <laughs> you wouldn't would you now that i think about it there are plenty of other boys You're getting together with mel is downright absurd <laughs> indeed Ah, uh, but anyway, back to what we were talking about earlier. Your family, I almost forgot. I, um, you haven't told me exactly where you came from or anything about your... 
Uh, Lady Nelly, I bought a new carpet. Uh, just look at the... Uh, wh why is Abigail capitalized now? <laughs> just look at the embroidery, the work of a true artisan. I'm simply in love with it. Surely you will find it to your liking as well. Well, you're, you're right. That's a Florentine stitch, isn't it? I wonder uh, whether someone mimicked the style or, or if it was imported. Either way, a great find. Let's hurry it up and get it laid out. Oh, and we'll have, we'll, we'll have to see how the colors go with everything else. Uh, we have to finish redecorating quickly so I can show Mel. He'll be so surprised. What wonderful taste you have, Nelly. Hee hee hee. When the other Abigails returned, so too did the did the bustle within Nelly's room. As the white haired as the white haired girl watched, a faint smile crossed her lips. Perhaps it was from rele relief at having escaped Nelly's Inquisition, or perhaps, perhaps what? Ah, oh, Nelly, I'm back. Do you mean something you're not supposed to, dear Smell? <laughs> you're unusually cheerful. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm the same as always, anyway. Never mind that, dearest Mel. Take a look at my room. I redecorated today. So that's what you've been doing, hiding away in the house all day, Nelly. How is that any different from what you were doing? You're in the church all day. Well Yeah, but being in one being in one physical place is not what he was is not what he was commenting on, Nelly. Staying indoors reading is very different from staying indoors and decorating. You know, not neither is bad. Those are bad way to go about decorating, as Nelly clearly shows. But um, but they are different. Um, I will look at your room. I promise. But first, uh, do you know where the new maid is? Now, now, don't get any strange ideas. I just haven't had yet had the chance to interest. Oh, he doesn't know that she knows that that is a blatant lie. Um. And, and I have just haven't yet had the chance to introduce myself. Except you haven't, I know it, yeah. Being the eldest son, it would be shameful if she were to pass me in the halls without even knowing who I am, so don't ask me. What? But you were in the house all day! She does the mother, so why would I know where she is? She did help redecorate my room. You made her help? Let's work for the men's servants, so there's no reason to make the maids do it. Oh, so you're saying I should invite a bunch of men into my room? Yeah, fair point. Um, I go into your room all the time, Nelly, and you were in my bedchamber just this morning. Also, fair point. Only one man is, uh, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't know, like, there's a part of me that's just, like, I know what's happening, and I know, you know, I've been, and I, I'm curious, like, I, anyway, we'll, we'll get to that later today, probably. This is going to serve him, which I will not stand for, I will not ask any of them for help. Oh, Nelly, I, you ought to be a little more, a little more what? If you're going to lecture me, I won't hear it. What am I going to do with you, my little lady? What, what, why are you looking at me like that? We talked about you, dearest Mel. I'm not going to tell you what she said. About me? What did she say? <laughs> I know that's probably just an emotional response, you know, he wasn't. But it's so funny to hear, like, don't ask me what she said. Wait, what did she say? Mm -hmm. Please, Nelly. She said... She said she has no romantic interest in you. Why would that even come up? These are both girls. We talk about, like... Things like, what kind of boys are like, and who's the most handsome? Yeah, well, no, this is not technically lying, but as you all saw, as you all, as I'm sure you all put together, esteemed viewers, um, she's not exactly, she's making a lie by omission, shall we say. Um, it wasn't exactly two equals talking about who they found romantically interesting, it was about two pe like, one person in a position of power over the other berating and interrogating that person. And who and also clearly having a preferred answer in mind. Um, why do you look so downtrodden, dearest Nell? You look like a sad little boy who can't get his crush to notice him. I mean, hit the nail on the head there, Nelly. <laughs> his face is unbecoming of a prince, Mel. Are you interested in her? That's strange. You haven't even met. I am not. It's just depressing to find out someone you've never even met doesn't like you. That's all. I'm going to make my move. I must do so soon. I don't have much time. The master of the house isn't around, so next in line would be him. That painting. Is it the same one as before? Or not? I don't know. Alright, a new scene. Woo! New chapter, whatever you want to call it. So right as near devastation by Nellie's news, Mel's flaxen eyes continued, continued to wander in hopes of catching sight of the girl. Hee hee, but now it should be quite obvious to you what Mel was feeling. But the boy himself was having difficulty comprehending the things going through his heart. 
Emotionally, he was horribly unstable, like a ship without a sail. And every time he, he spotted the white-haired girl, his heart would leap, his whole body jitter with anxiety and excitement. He never felt like any, anything like this before, and as such, he struggled to keep these strange emotions in check. Also, damn, Mel just keeps being relatable to me. Um, whenever, whenever he saw an opportunity, Mel would speak with, to the white-haired girl. In days he was unable to, he, he either spent in secluded silence or distracted days. Love is a curious thing. It has the power to change those who experience it. When he did manage to approach her, he tripped over his tongue. Again and again he talked to her, and again and again he stumbled. Imagine if you were to take uh, him to see a romance at the theater in his present state, he would cry just as much as little Nelly. Probably more. We cry at tragedies because we draw parallels with our own lives. Uh, I think that's an... And I'm Mr. You know, find relatability in, in everyone's... Um, in every fictional character. And even I'm like, that's not entirely true, you know? Like, I mean, I... Sure, I saw a bit of myself in Orpheus from Hades Town, but that wasn't. I also didn't cry at Hades Town, but I, you know, I, it affected me not like none of the characters I found relatable enough to be like I don't know, I feel like it was happening to me or whatever. So this is what I think. Great tales of romance attain true gravity with the audience only when they are personally familiar with love. Well, yeah, I don't know. I I would say that I've had experienced at least a, a fraction of what Mel is experiencing only very recently. And I liked Moulin Rouge way before any of that. So, yeah. Um, in the event, the white-haired girl was, as a result of this, visibly perturbed. She was delighted that he was being so kind to her, but her confusion overpowered, every, but confusion overpowered every other emotion. She, be, she appeared to be at a loss for what to do as he clumsily catapulted words and stared at, stares at her. But Mel did not back down, though he probably knew um, not what caused such fiery emotion to erupt from within his breast. One's first love in particular tends to burn like a wildfire. Are you familiar with the sensation? Yeah. I don't know. I've I've gotten very good at, you know, not, you know, not, you know, not like it, quelling those emotions before they start or something. I don't know. It's although not as much recently and I've been I've been working on it, you know. There she is. Is she cleaning? No, it looks like she's reading. It's now or never. Boo! Ah! I just, I just, that, that's like exactly, while well, we're on the subject of musicals, I guess, that's like exactly like the end of Popular from Wicked, and how do I know how Popular from Wicked ends? Anyway. It's not even, like, it's like my least favorite Wicked song, and I still know how it ends. Um. Ah, sorry, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Or Mel, you were very, you very clearly meant to scare me, because you just wouldn't notice me. What are you reading? It looks pretty engrossed. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have asked for permission. It's fine. I need to apologize. Feel free to read whatever you want. You're welcome to bring books back to your room if you'd like to spend more time with them. Um, but I was just, I was just amazed at the mansion at the library. It must have been a lot of work to collect all these books. If she was in the mansion previously, did she not know it had a library? There are some pretty old books in here, too. Your grandfather's? Some that he collected, and some even older than that. Take a look at this. I think it's a diary, but it's not from this country. Or this century, for that matter. Maybe a feudal lord? <laughs> here, he's complaining about the quality of the harvest. Can this forsaken land only produce over-sour grapes? Ah, if only the largest of the, uh, Barney? Or maybe Barnier? If only the largest of the Barnier, um, estates were mine instead. The land there is is so much is much more suitable to cultivation. There you have it. You can read this, Lord Mill? Well, more or less. I've looked over it several times already, so that wasn't too difficult. Why would such an old book be here? I'm not sure. It and all of this was already here when I moved into the mansion. So does he live here permanently, despite this being their family's second home? Their family's second mansion? <laughs> have you not lived here your whole life? I was born at our estate, but to me and Nelly, this is more like our home. No, nope. <laughs> they immediately answered my question after I asked it. That was pretty cool. Also a bit spooky. Um, we moved when I was still young, and we've lived here ever since. Nelly and Mother have both grown quite fond of it. Father, though, often goes back to the house because he doesn't like all the roses. By himself? Yeah, well, sometimes Mother goes with him. For the most part, he goes alone. Okay, I actually can kind of understand where the father is coming from with that. There's a part of me that's like, okay, I like roses as much as the next guy, but, like, if, the, if this entire house was, like, 
just the gardens were all nothing but roses, I would get sick of it. I don't know why that is. Um, but don't get me wrong, it's not because they don't get along. In fact, they, they act more like teenagers in love than grown adults. It almost makes me sick having to watch it. Ugh, yeah, I can imagine. Um, said something about it. Hold on. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be so close, no matter how old they may be. True, but still. There are those in the world who, who cannot be with the ones they care for as much as they may wish. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, oh, that's right, the book! What were you reading? I, um, wasn't exactly reading. I can't... I do not enjoy reading lots of text. So I was looking at the pictures. So she can't, she can't read. She, you know, and one, one random other thing, one, one other soapbox I want to get on for a brief second. I won't be, I will not, it would not bother me if I saw you skipping this segment, esteemed viewer. Um, but I, I really hate it when people use illiterate, illiterate as shorthand for, you know, dumb or, you know, like, cause it's like literacy is just a matter of like being in a, in a situation where you are able to be taught to read, you know, like the wealthier the area, the more literate it is. And as we have unfortunately seen, um, rich people are not inherently smarter than us. Perhaps you're actually more like Nelly and issue your studies. Um, I, yes. I <laughs> one of them guess. I do love that. She's just like, I don't want to admit I'm illiterate. Um, I'm intellectually lazy. <laughs> but you like looking at pictures. I do. What else do you like? Uh, what? What do you enjoy doing? It can be anything. I enjoy being told stories. Stories? Yes, when I was young, my father would tell me tales. What kind of stories did you like? Um, there was one about an imprisoned girl. Tell it to me. I have a feeling that this is also going to be come up later in the game. Uh, once there was a girl, and she was locked away in a mansion deep in the forest. A mansion with only one window. So Rapunzel... But the window sat high upon the wall, far beyond her reach, so it was always very dark inside, unlike this mansion. However, the girl did not like the outside world. There were lots of scary things out there, after all. But she may have, have been all alone in the mansion. She grew comfortable with the darkness in time, so she had nothing to be afraid of. Okay, this also kind of speaks to me. And then, um, am I doing a good job? You're doing fine. Keep going. What happens next? Okay. And then the girl grew up. By then, she had already forgotten why she was locked up, but she was content with the darkness. However, her eyes couldn't help but be drawn to the little bit of light that spilled through the one window. Though she was comfortable in the darkness, the, the sight of the light made her heart race. At first, the girl thought it was because she found it unpleasant, because she disliked the light and the outside. But slowly, she came to realize that she was curious about the outside world. What could be happening out there? For all she knew, the town, the forest, the people, all of it could have changed when she, while she was imprisoned in the mansion. But she had no way of finding out. So, so the girl decided to write letters and throw them out the window. What began as empty grasping became routine, continuing for several months until she was finally ready to give up. But then a beautiful white dove flew in through the window. Tied to the dove's leg was a letter. Her heart racing, she read the words contained within. It seemed to have been written by a man. The letter contained numerous questions for the girl. It also said that um, if she attached a reply to the dove, it would bring the letter back to him. She was astonished, but she wrote him back anyway, taking care not to mention where she was. After having exchanged letters a number of times, the two felt very close to one another, as though they had known each other for many years, despite having never met. And eventually, the man said he wanted to meet her. Indeed. The girl was unsure what to do. Should she tell him how, how, how she lived? Should she reveal where she, where she spent her days? She was afraid that if she did, he would cease to send her letters. She was sure he believed her to be a young lady of noble blood, not a girl locked away in a house deep in the forest. The girl could not bring herself to write a response. She released the dove through the window with nothing attached to its leg. And yet it returned with another letter, written in the man's familiar hand. You must surely have a grave reason for your silence, it said. No matter what that... no matter, I would like to know that reason, and I would like to help you. No matter what it, what it may be, you have my word. She deliberated. Those letters were kind. She did, not, she did not know this man. It was from the outside. Would he still treat her the same way when he met her? And did she even want to step out into the world beyond? What do you think she did? Uh, wrote a letter and agreed to meet him, right? Yes, she did. The girl made up her mind. She would write a letter. As always, uh, when she tied it to the dove's leg, it flew off out the window. For some time after that, she, she received no response from the man. This saddened her, but she thought it was for the best. She belonged in her own confined world, her world of darkness. But then one day, light shone into the mansion. A sealed door had been opened, and in the doorway stood a handsome young man. I've come for you, he said. The man was a prince from a neighboring kingdom. When the girl stepped outside, before her sat a magnificent carriage, 
the likes of which uh, she had never before seen, accompanied by many servants. The prince, kind as in the letters, swore his love to her. And the two lived happily ever after. Okay, I'm assuming that if this is actually based on a story from, like, earlier chronologically in this game story, probably doesn't end that way. Oh, what a nice story. I'm glad it had a happy ending. He a prince. Oh, was there something funny about the story? No, no, no. That's not why I'm. That's not why I was laughing. Did you ever imagine uh, what it would be like if a prince showed up for you? Huh? Doesn't have to be a real prince. Even just someone like one. Wow, you're so subtle, Mel. Is that something you dream about? Oh no. Um, I think I'm perhaps a little too old for that. You think so? Nellie still fantasizes about her prince, and she's fourteen. I just assumed all girls were the same. Lady Nellie's prince. Uh, that's you, Lord Mel. See, okay, this is interesting. Um, again, getting a little personal and soapboxy. One thing I'm learning, I've learned, I've started to like really come to understand very recently is, you know, despite, um, despite, you know, a lot of these, um, tropes being, you know, sexist slash misogynistic, and despite a lot of, um, women, you know, knowing these things, a lot of women also, like, on some level internalize it, you know, even if they know, you know, logically that it's not, um, not true, you know, and obviously, you know, not everyone, and it's more, it's really complicated and all that, but, um, that's something I'm, that's one thing, again, I'm just learning, like, oh, you know, maybe, I don't know, I don't know how to, how to phrase it exactly. Was it not? Uh, I mean, we used to play make-believe a lot when we were kids, but I very much doubt, uh, she still thinks of me that way in earnest. Uh, when she calls me your prince now, it's mostly in jest. <laughs> uh... The white-haired girl's like, um, no. If it weren't, that would be concerning. Oh? Uh, that story. Do you know it's a regional tale? Uh, one that's been passed on through the ages. I'm not sure. It could very well... Oh, do you know if it's a regional tale, right? Is that what he says? Um, if it's a regional tale. That, that makes more sense. I was like, did he know the story the whole time? Um, I'm not sure. It could very well be of my father's own creation. Um... You might think me conceited, but I think the story might be about me. The girl trapped in the mansion is you? You haven't been locked up anywhere before, have you? No, thankfully, I have never been locked up before. Thank goodness. But with an appearance like mine, I can sympathize with her being afraid of the outside world. Well, I can... I alluded earlier that, you know, I, my appearance is not anything abnormal, but there are other things about me that I have gotten into detail about extensively before that... But also made me, you know, make, and still does make me afraid of... I mean, I'm literally sitting in a room by myself in the darkness right now. <laughs> you know, um... With an appearance like mine, I can sympathize with her being afraid of the outside world. You know, uh, real quick, another another thing that, you know, I used to think that, you know... You know, ableism towards, you know, people with, you know, like, phys like, like physically disabled people and, you know... Uh, physically handicapped people and mentally handicapped people, you know, or mentally, you know, neuro neurodivergent people, um, was different. And then I read Randolph Bourne's The Handicapped, and I was like, eh, no, this is sounding really familiar. I'm sure there's still differences, but it's, uh, they felt like different sides of the same coin rather than two equally bad but very different things. Anyway, um... You know, wonderful life with me. You know, like, and then I watch, like, Disney's Hunter and Notre Dame, and I'm like, yeah, a lot of Disney's thought process, uh, processes I'm I'm very familiar with. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, if it were only me and my father. Hmm. But the girl left the house at the end. If your father really wrote that story, then I believe it contains his hope for you to end up the same way. No. I don't have what it takes to be a real prince and whisk you away, but I can at least pretend. So if it was your father's wish for you to see the outside world, uh, then surely there's nothing wrong with you getting out and experiencing all the scenery that world has to offer. I want to see the outside too, or to be more specific, other countries. Uh, so, so uh, if you'd like, we maybe see dis go see distant lands together. Oh my God, Nelly, cork blocker. <laughs> Seriously though, th like. That's too convenient. Was she, like, listening to the whole thing? <laughs> ah, dearest Mel, I've been looking all over for you. Nelly? Look at this, dearest Mel. Mother uh, bought me these wonderful gloves to wear on walks. The roses embroidered on the wrist are just precious. Again, like, even, like, even the, 
the furniture, like, the, like even like every, even the constant Rose iconography would start to just make me <laughs> irrationally angry at roses all the time. Oh my, you're right. Yeah, I, I get irrational anger is, is redundant, but anyway. Um, oh my, you're right. They are beautiful. You appear to be dizzy, Lord Mal. Are you feeling unwell? Uh, no, I'm fine. <sighs> at least it's, at least I'm recording this in the evening, so my yawn isn't coming in like the middle of the day. Um, <laughs> Mel's feeling frustrated at his inability to convey his feelings for her. As his frustration built up over time, he developed. I suppose you could call it a severe case of love sickness. For several consecutive nights, he had been afflicted with a peculiar sensation. A presence in his bedchamber. Ugh. Death! Death to the unholy one! Death to the heretic! Death to the... Oh, this is probably... Uh, I think this is going to come up later in the game. Kill XXX. Okay, Swerf. <laughs> Sorry. That's such a... That was probably in poor taste, but I, I don't know. Um, she's, uh, why? I never wanted her to die. Was she not eating? She left the tower, understood. No one finds out about this. How can you be so calm? Don't you understand what you've done? Ha! <laughs> Pinning the blame on me. How nice it must be to be able to distort reality with panic. You're just as guilty as any of us. Never wanted her to die. Well, you know. You actively, when it seems like you actively went overall, um, along with things that you probably knew were not good for her physical health. The witch killed her. The butt of the witch killed my XXXXXXXX. <laughs> I think that was too many X's. I forgot about this. I forgot about this whole like flashback thing. Also, I might need to put an epilepsy warning on this, on this video. Um, yeah. A dream? What was what was that dream? It was horribly unsettling. I was holding someone, a girl I cared for dearly in my arms, and she was limp. It was almost as if she were dead. I've been having a lot of really unpleasant dreams lately. Can't stop shaking. Why would I have such a dream? This is like some Silent Hill shit. I still really want to play Silent Hill. But I wonder, who was that girl? I could sense someone standing beyond my door. Someone there? It's like they're watching me. Is it just my imagination? Can't move. What? Is he having sleep paralysis? Or did he watch the Blair Witch Project one? Not the Blair Witch Project, uh, Paranormal Activity one too many times. I still remember when I watched that movie, and, like, for, like, a year afterwards, I was, like, constantly, like, freaked out when I was just alone in the dark at night. It's actually kind of amazing what they did. It's growing fainter. I... Is that truly what your story meant, Father? But I... Such a magnificent garden. Something we could never have had. Are my intentions misguided? What a beautiful white rose. I don't think I've ever actually seen a right a white rose. Oh, this is a... Um, I I tried to create a um, uh, House of Beta Morgana subreddit. Because surprisingly, I couldn't find any public ones. Um, and uh, this is an image I tried to use before I somehow screwed everything up and I don't know why. Uh, I don't know how I, what exactly I did, um, but like it visually is all messed up now. Anyway, you know, you could have sneaked into his room rather easily then. No one was watching. <laughs> how long have you... Oh, you need to pay me any mind. Oh, is she watching him? Okay. Oh, you need to pay me any mind. I shall not condemn you no matter what you might do. Rather, I am on your side. Why am I getting some Faustian vibes from this? I was not going to do anything. Oh, is that so? Then perhaps you were out for a late night stroll. I imagine you have less difficulties going outside at night. I beg your pardon. I will, I will return to the mansion immediately. Oh, yes, that reminds me. Uh, it was also the middle of the night when the grocery servant broke into their safe. News of that sp spread quite far. I'm sure you would have heard about it. Oh? Although was Gimash imprisoned? Who the hell is Gimash? Dear me, I'm having trouble remembering. But worry not, if you wish for it, the mansion shall provide. You are in no danger whatsoever of getting caught. <gasps> you said that a witch lives in the mansion, did you not? I did. Does that sound perhaps a bit archaic to you? No. I believe those rumors mockingly refer to me. Oh my. I have been accused of being a witch before, which is amusing. I don't have any magical powers. I simply have an unusual appearance. Uh, wow, so the white rose just became a red rose. That was interesting. 
The rose. Something the matter. This rose. This rose is white. Until I took it in my hand. <laughs> is that so? Okay, something tells me the maid actually did that and not and not um, the white haired girl. I apologize, I must sound mad. I'm sure I was just mistaken. I couldn't possibly have changed. I wonder. Yes? Did the girl locked in the mansion become a princess? What? We should lock up and head to bed. Make sure all of the sitters. So is this like some weird like, like, watching secretive viewing section? Is is the maid watching Nelly? Who's watching um? Who's watching um? The white haired girl who's watching Mel. <laughs> anyway, this is, this whole bit is like longer than I remembered. Also, the scene transition sound I don't didn't doesn't seem like it changed. Um, slowly but surely, time trekked onward. Everyone working towards their own individual goals. Either way, uh, it, it, whoa! Each early summer breeze that blew through the garden was like God's hallowed breath, carrying the flowers of fragrance in through the in through Rose Manor's windows. If only time could be stopped in this beautiful era made to live on through eternity. As usual, Mel's eyes chased after the white-haired girl, and Nellie pursed her lips in frustration at him. But she was still rather docile, even though to even taking into account into account how self how self-centered she behaved, how fickle her temper, Nellie's fits were still no worse than a playful kitten. See, at that very moment, our lovely little feline had her claws poised to swat at the flaxen-haired young man. <laughs> Mel, you promised me, or have you forgotten? I haven't forgotten. I, I feel like I'm, I'm misrepresenting the voices, but I also... I don't know, I don't really want to do a voice like this, because it feels like it's both kind of offensive, and also just like it would be a lot to do. And yeah, anyway. Um, I haven't forgotten. Um, but I'm just asking if we can go another day. Another day? This isn't something that happens every day. Uh, I've been looking forward to tonight's performance for so long. There's nothing I can do about that. We're having a gathering at the priest's home tonight. Several high-ranking officials have come up from the mainland just for this. Who cares? I care. You know, Nelly, it doesn't have to be me who goes with you. No, I want to go with you, Mel. You've been so distant lately, dearest Mel. You refuse to do anything with me. It's not true. Tell me. If you can't go, can't go today, then, then when can you? When will you be willing to go out with me? Um, when, will you be willing, when will you be willing to play cards with me to have tea together? I can't make any promises. and I have things to do, obligations. And Nelly, you're almost an adult yourself. Stop acting like such a child. I'm not an adult yet, I'm still a kid. Uh, if it means I don't get to play with you anymore, dearest mother, I don't want to be an adult. Nelly, you can't... Lady Nelly, he wishes to speak with you. The, 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 your father. Oh, huh, father, it's weird how sometimes I, I, I feel like I, like I just instinctively, yeah, I read it, I say that word, but I don't always do that. I don't know. It's odd. Um, huh, father does. Uh, what could he want? Um, uh, voice crack again. Uh, go on, Nelly. I think it might be something have something to do with my posture. Let me straighten up a bit. Um, go on, Nelly. You can't make father wait. He's very particular about people keeping their appointments. Yes, he is. Unlike you, dearest Nell. He's got her in such a foul mood. Oh, thank goodness for small miracles. Nelly just won't seem to take me at my word lately. You mustn't be so harsh on her. She is your one and only darling little sister. You're right, but still... She's taken it a bit too far of late. Oh, I'm not so sure. She does seem to be behaving. She doesn't. She does not seem to be behaving any differently to me. I mean, you might only be noticing it for the first time, Mel. Hmm. Am I the one acting differently then? Well, enough about that. Uh, can I ask you a favor? I me? Mean, what can I do for you? I was thinking. Uh, physically, Mel was undeniably a young man, but that smirk that crossed his lips as he schemed gave his face. The the sweet look of a little boy. Or perhaps he was, that was simply part of his charm. And it was not the age disparity, but his character that made his smile so heartwarming. What did he ask of me? <laughs> you shall find out soon enough. It's cloudy. Thank goodness for that, too. Um, though it would have been even better if it were even darker out. Um, I believe the textile shop was around here. Ah, hi there. Oh, you should have said, he if only he had said hello there, because then I could have made a General Kenobi reference. And I still managed to do that. Uh, Lord Mel, uh, fancy seeing, fancy meeting you here? Yeah, um, what a surprise. So, uh, what do you say we take the chance to go for a little walk? Since you're sensitive to sunlight, we can keep our eyes up for shadowy areas as we go. 
And if you're feeling well, just let me know. Uh, um, I was sent out to run an errand. Don't worry about that. Come on, follow me. Um, I'm sorry. I, uh, it, uh, actually wasn't an accident that we crossed paths. Really, you were so, you were so good at hiding that fact. I planned this out ahead of time. Asked to have you sent out on a fake errand. It feels like I'm always on alert back in the mansion. <laughs> Can't relax in my own house. It's actually kind of funny. Sorry, that was inappropriate of me. I just thought, since the sun's mostly blocked out, it would be alright if... Um, I'm feeling just fine, and my... Ugh, my... My uh, shirt is caught. <laughs> just got caught on the back of my chair. Um, I'm feeling just fine. Ah. Oh, what, what was that? I missed that. Uh, of course, uh, I'm a I'm a professional. <laughs> Not in both senses of the word. Um, of course, I I get her out of the house, and I can't even think of anything to say. Hey, uh, yes. Have you settled into life at the mansion? I have. Everyone has been such a big help. It's good to hear. Indeed. So, uh, yes, uh, Nellie told me, uh, she had you help redecorate her room some time back. Ah, yes, that was shortly after I arrived. What of it? Uh, yeah, uh, that day Nellie told me that you don't, um, I don't, never mind, sorry, it's not important. Hmm? It is important, but I can't just ask how she feels about me. That would make it sound like I, forget sound like, I do, don't I? Lord Mel, oh, sorry, uh, I had something on my mind. Uh, it looks like it might rain again today. The weather usually gets better as summer approaches, not worse like it has been. There's a storm coming. Won't be a heavy storm, though. No. The wind is too gentle. You can tell from that? Vaguely, but yes. Huh, that's impressive. I have to leave the house unprepared and only to find myself sloshing back in the rain. <laughs> you laugh a lot more than you used to. Do I? Uh, yeah, and I like that. Uh, you look better with a smile on your face. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. I, I know he's trying to be nice, but that just... And maybe... And maybe it doesn't, maybe it's it's okay, it's an okay thing he said, but it just sounds way too much like that. You look really pretty when you, when you smile. You should smile more like that whole thing. A smile suits Lady Nelly much more than I. What? Her smile and your smile are completely different. Also, a smile suits you as well, Lord Mel. Do you really think so? What am I supposed to do in the face of a smile like that? So, um, yes? Knowing her, if I ask if I'm imposing, she'll say no without hesitation. Trying to cover myself isn't going to get me anywhere. Hold on a second. I never did get you those flowers like I promised. There was a single white rose blooming in the garden. I was planning to give it to you, but it disappeared before I had the chance. Oh, boy. So I'd like you to have this. It's not a real rose, but it won't wilt either. I Mel was holding an, holding an ornamental white rose. It was an impressively detailed replica of the real thing crafted by an incredibly skilled artisan's hand. Is this the artisan that manages to work for the royal family themselves? Um, it was, I imagine, made by the same craftsman from whom Nell had ordered uh, Nellie's birthday necklace. The young man, who had but a handful of days earlier had said he had no sweetheart, had come in to commission a present for a girl. <laughs> the master of the shop must have been quite surprised. Or he perhaps had given him a good laugh instead. I was, I was going to say, or he had been like, finally, and I think that's spiritually similar to uh, to the next line there. It was for this moment that he so desperately sought for time together with the right-haired girl. I don't know what you like, so I had to base it on my sister's tastes. Uh, my, my apologies, I cannot accept this. Is the design not to your liking? Uh, no, I just... If you're concerned with how much I paid for it, don't be. I just want you to have it, that's all. Please. Why are you so kind to me? Why? Because I'm sorry I can't accept it. A clear glint of flustered panic was vis visible in her red eyes. Yeah, this is, this is, I'm relating more to the white-haired girl now. Um, also, it kind of, I'm kind of getting some Goodwill Hunting vibes. The gender swapped, um, Goodwill Hunting. Um, also, this music is reminding me of, um, Full Metal Alchemist. Um, there's not a girl in the world whose heart would not flutter at the sight of the sparkling rose accessory. But her reaction was far from delight. As a matter of fact, there were traces of fear and apprehension in her countenance. I beg your pardon. Oh, hold on. With a look of distress on her face, the white-haired girl made to run off, but Mel grabbed her by the arm in the nick of time. At least tell me why. Because you just like me? I, I never said I'm... Something's wrong with me. From the day you, were, you've arri you arrived at the mansion, it's like I haven't been myself. I've been strangely aflutter ever since then. Whenever I try to study or when I, whether I try to whether I try to study or whether I try to read, none of it sticks. I'm just looking at pages of text, tracing rows of letters, only for them to disappear as soon as they look away. Well, 
I I hope, you know, I hope if I ever get lovesickness, that won't be one of the symptoms, because I quite like media, as you probably guessed, esteemed viewer. Um, it's all it's all because of you. I, I truly, truly am sorry. Please don't be any more generous than you already have. When I'm with you, my willpower wavers. What do you mean by that? I'm so sorry. Oh, wait. Oh, hey, this is actually a different... Like, this feels like a unique, you know, portrait. Uh, Mel's grip loosened for a moment, allowing her to slip free and dart off like a gust of wind, not giving him a chance to stop her a second time. The dumbfounded flaxen hair. There it is again. Drink. <laughs> Drinking game. Um, stood frozen in place, left all by himself. Uh, the breeze uh, with which the white-haired girl had called gentle earlier felt faintly chilly, almost as if mocking him. It looks like she's even less fond of me than I thought. God, I'm crying. I'm pathetic. Well, if it isn't Mel, what might you be... Are you crying? <laughs> I'm so pitiful. Sorry to see this. Nothing of it. I passed my girl a few moments ago. She appeared to be rather distressed as well. Something happened between the two of you? I wasn't good enough, it seems. Not good enough. Not good enough, damn it! Not good enough! <laughs> uh, that was the new maid I was telling you about before. I was, um... Like you said, Father, I was keen on her quite. And after being me to tears like a miserable child. She rejected me. I don't even have what it takes to be a stand-in prince. Mel. I apologize for complaining to you about this. I'm completely hopeless. Mel. Please don't try to cheer me up. I don't need any sympathy. I just... No, Mel, listen to me. What? I've seen that girl before. What do you mean? But, hmm, you said she was a servant at your house, right? In which case... Yes, yeah, she is. Please tell me, Father, where did you see her? Why would she be so evasive? It was uh, probably someone else. He probably saw, or saw her back when he was, like, a kid or something. Someone else? You're saying you mistook someone who stands out as much as her? I mean, other albino women ex exist, dude. Uh, father? She and a man whom I assume is her father paid a visit to the church once. They came asking for food, their clothes in tatters. The two were emaciated. I don't think they were eating daily. What? Wait, wait a minute. Are you saying she's a beggar? But father said she came from an esteemed house. Which is why I said I might be mistaken, Mel. She, she has a singular aspect, but it is possible there is another girl who looks similar. Deep down, though, the priest surely believed the opposite. And so he said sternly, like teacher to a pupil, But you must be absolutely, absolutely certain, Mel, understood? You cannot proceed any further without knowing her ancestry. May I visit the church, Father? By all means. In the back of Mel's mind, a vision of the night of the storm, the night the white-haired girl arrived at the mansion, was surely replaying. She had been wearing little more than rags and covered in grime, hardly the appearance of, her, of a respectable young lady of class. Have I been putting her through unnecessary stress? She actually turns out to be nameless, to be rankless. No matter where she comes from, my heart is decided. I will not fool myself about how I feel any longer. No, I cannot fool myself. I've recently, um, oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna get me in trouble, I think. I've recently been talking about how I actually feel kind of sorry for Prince Charles. You know, not as sorry as I feel for all the people who, um, all the people who, um, um, uh, um, all the people who, like, have suffered to give him the absurd wealth that he has nothing for, but, you know, I also look at, you know, what happened and how he had to marry someone he didn't love and how everyone hated him and also hated the woman he loved, like, even more than they hated him. You know, it's fine. Anyway, um, how does she feel? What will everyone else think? Uh, I have to find out why she was welcomed into our house. I'll ask whether her father. No. Um, if for some reason they don't know she isn't aristocratic, um, I'm better off not saying anything. But if they don't, then does that mean she's been lying to us and to them? I have to find out. Uh, this time I must get answers. No, absolutely not. You come back and you come back and the first thing you say is that. Oh boy, I hate you, father. I will not stand for this. Ah. Why? Why would he just suddenly throw that on me? He didn't even ask for my opinion. Yeah, arranged marriage. Oh, I didn't, I didn't. I still need to do the second unrest video. Except nobody, even less people than usual, watch the unrest video. So, um, but I might still have to do the unrest video to talk about arranged marriage stories. Oh, I won't do it. I'm fine. Just the way things are. I'm just fine. Also, 
It's not. I need your help. I don't. I don't. I. I. I, I, I would have, I do have sympathy for Nelly here, you know, and this, I honestly, like, I don't know, this feels more, like, the arranged marriage stories I don't like are the ones that frame it as, like, as, like, that, like, tone it down, don't frame it as something that's, like, deadly serious and, like, like, legitimately something people are afraid of. I th- we're gonna find out something about Nelly that makes my, <laughs> makes my sympathy for her lesson, I'll say. Um, I don't want to get married... Um, I'm gonna move my microphone back. I feel like I'm I'm closer to it than usually I am. I might make my voice louder than I want it to be or something. I don't know. Um, this may seem sudden, but I I must confess that I made a grave mistake. My suggestion is that I was unable to completely predict where this path we were traveling led. My hands were full dealing with the, my immediate day to day tasks, so I could not do. Wait, why are you putting this on yourself? Like. Because the way she's saying it is not, it's not, sur- doesn't sound survivor's guilt, it, like survivor's guilt. It just sounds like, it, it just sounds like, um, uh, how do I put this? It just sounds like she's like, oh yeah, I, I guess I messed up. I was, I don't know, it's weird. Um, happiness for everyone who lives in Rose Manor. But I am about to be your maid. There are limits to what I am allowed to do. Yeah, I'm your maid who appears to have been alive for centuries. <laughs> I'm sure there are still limits of what she's right, she's allowed to do, and I'm sure we'll get into that eventually. Um, and furthermore, it was not my place to offer her my hand. Roads, such as the one we were following, have a way of diverging with little warning. Kind of like a railroad line on the road to hell. <laughs> like in the sky, we've got that reference. Um, if you do not turn the wheel exactly right at those sudden forks, you may end up somewhere horribly off course. I was well aware of that fact, which is why I thought that what I did was for the best. Uh-oh. It's happening again. I made sure the door was closed, but I can sense someone standing there. Someone watching me. Footsteps. They're looking down at me? I'm gonna open my eyes, but I can't do it. Curses. You're just gonna leave without doing anything, aren't you? Then hurry up and get out of here. Free me from this torture. No, tonight there. How am I bending? They're looking down at me. My neck. What? I can't speak. I can't move. Mmm. Cold fingers. A soft breath. What? Why? I can move my body. But that's not important right now. Oh, right. The white-haired girl. You smell of roses. The scent of a world far removed from ours. <laughs> wow, that's, that sounds like exactly the kind of pillow talk I might hypothetically give um, someday. <laughs> of course, it would not be, you know, in, <laughs> in this situation. Um... um you know, the person I would be doing build talk with would hopefully know I was there. Um, he made to guess with the sight before him, uh, only to realize he could not. The pressure of her cold fingertips wrapped around his throat uh, robbed him almost entirely of the ability to breathe. Why? He silently mouthed the word. For that moment, at least, her melancholic ruby eyes were focused wholly on the flaxen-haired young man. In them um, glowed a faint, flicker, a faint flicker of willpower and a continuously burning agitation that roused her to action. I told you to stop being so kind to me. Why? It, it, it will all be over soon. Please don't make any noise. Why? To put an end to this family, you are my only... Why are you shaking? What? Upon hearing Mel's words, the strength drained from her slender fingers. He never questioning why she would do such a thing. There was, of course, a trace of bewilderment visible in his eyes. But he did not shout, nor did he tremble in fear. He instead pressed concern for the young woman who looked like a cornered rabbit. Yeah. It's like the... It's like the... The, the fox is, is is attacking the rabbit, but the, but the fox is the one who's scared. I'm not shaking. You are. I can see it. Oh, you are. I can see it. I thought she was like, I'm not shaking. You are. Uh, he slowly regained his breath. Mel's voice too drew, grew clearer. Conversely, the red-eyed girls uh, grew progressively more faint and raspy. You are not doing this because you genuinely, genuinely want to. There's some other reason. This is what I desire. Have you been to my room before? You have. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. Tell me, why are you shaking? You're not putting any pressure on my neck. Why haven't you run? Because I cannot fathom why you would do this, so I'm not afraid. Do you hate me so deeply that you want me dead? Do you despise me to the point you'd be willing to take my life with your own hands? No, no, I don't. See, like I said, there's another reason. The reason because you detest me. Then tell me, why is it? I'm sorry. I will leave your room now. Um, I will do my best not to bother you any further, so please forget anything ever happened. You think I'm just going to say okay and let you go? 
Why can't you tell me the reason? I'm sorry. All right, then I guess then I'll try and guess. What? It has something to do with your lineage. You're troubled by it somehow, am I right? I thought so. How, how did you know about that? The priest at the church told me he had seen you before. He also told me um, about your origin. That's all I know. The only difference between us is social rank, which is made up bullshit anyway. Um, I don't even... I don't know what would cause you to do this. Uh, please, uh, tell me who you really are. Uh, tell me why you came to the mansion and why father allowed you to be a maid. I haven't said anything to mother or father. If you're hiding the truth from them, they still don't know. But I want to. I won't get mad at you or have you punished. I'll even swear to God if you'd like. I I want to be the prince who whisks you, whisks you away. I want to be like the prince who rescued the girl from the dark mansion and showed her the world. I know I'm not that dependable, but I want to help you. Why, why do you... You show me such compassion. Why do you treat me like this? I have my hand around your neck. Uh, why? I thought it would be obvious. I have not expressed myself enough. No. I uh, I have not expressed my, uh, or have I not expressed myself well enough? I I love you. I still, of course I skipped over the I love you part. Every time you push away, it crushes me. I I didn't even know my heart could feel such distress. If you dislike me um, and don't want to be with me, then well, I'll just have to live with that. As much as it may hurt. But if you have some other reason, some weight on your shoulders that you can't share with anyone else, tell me. I want to help you. There are other options. Things we can do about your... No, that's not it, huh? I, I've tried to hate you so many times. So yes, there's more to it than just social status. But I can't do it. I couldn't make myself do it. What do you mean? I had so many chances, but I couldn't do anything. She spoke in a stifled voice as if every word I had to fight to escape her... Uh, escape her lips. Uh, she appeared so fragile, so precarious looking down on him, that it seemed as though if a gust of wind were to whisk through the room, it would blow her away completely. Her pale fingers were trembling. Uh, moving too fast. Uh, her pale fingers were trembling, uh, like she had tried to squeeze them again and failed. However, her hand did not pull away from his still slender neck. Her hand is so cold. He did not challenge her, but suddenly kept his eyes fixed on hers, as if carefully watching to see what she would do next. I'll say it as many times as I must, I love you. And I wouldn't be able to accept losing you without knowing anything. So please tell me the reason. I'll see to it that you're taken care of. Those are the words of a man of means, Lord Mel. Someone blessed enough to have pity for others. That's a... Yeah. You are a foolish young man. You know... <laughs> you know nothing, Lord Mel. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Um, but the greatest fool of all is myself. Uh, if you agree to punish me, I will talk. Tell me. Wait, if you agree... If you agree to punish me, okay, I had to make sure that that was actually what she said. I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't miss a knot somewhere in that sentence. Um, her long white hair and his soft flaxen hair touched. What is it with this game and hair color? I'm sorry. Um, for just the briefest of moments, it uh, it appeared as in the darkness as though they had fused together. The white haired girl, having finally gathered the courage, began to slowly tell her tale. On the night of the storm, I paid a visit to Rose Manor, this mansion. My father and I were always on the move, traveling across the land by foot, um, so it was only recently that we heard, that we heard rumor of, rumors of Rose Manor. Uh, there were several reasons we couldn't stay in one place. First is my unusual appearance. People often find the color of my skin in their eyes disconcerting. So after living in one place for long enough, unsettling rumors would begin to spread, forcing us to leave. Another reason was my father's line of work. He painted pictures for a living. We had trouble finding a patron, so we had to work day to day. Uh, when he was no longer able to find work in a city, he, we would move. We were birds that migrated without a flock. When we arrived at this town, my father was, felt was exhausted and weak. It's weird because I like there's like different aspects of these experiences that I like both very much relate to. Um, uh, anyway, um, like a combination of the white-haired girl and and Belle, and you know, obviously it's more complicated than that because people are always more complicated than characters. But anyway. Um, when we arrived at this town, my father was exhausted and weak. Um, that is when we learned of Rose Manor, the family who dwelt within it. Rose is a name my father could never forget. He was, long ago, a painter in service of the Rose family. Hold on, your father was an artist here? Yes, it was before I was born, so you probably don't remember, Lord Mel. So, you knew about us before we came here. For as long as I can remember, I've known the name Rose. My father was chased from your house, just because they didn't like something he painted. Having failed the Rose family, anyone else would become his patron. Just as a good reputation spread, so does a bad one. Okay, Nishka. Uh, Brandon once is a failure. You know what a reputation is? It's, it's gossip. It's people talking. 
Uh, Brandon once is a failure, and no one would um, would take you will take you in ever again. You know, we'll throw your parties and spread your gossip about this painter or that sculptor. The Rosie tried to give. Yep, these nobles, they they think freedom is something they can give or take on a limb. Um, the Rosie tried to give me is, is an example of that. Uh, it was certainly crafted with skill, but the jeweler is only known because some aristocrats spoke highly of him. My father's paintings were no less skillful. It was a talent that could not e be, e be easily imitated, but no one was willing to separate the art from the artist. The Rose family stole everything from my father. Uh, but even thrown it onto the streets, his only skill was painting. That was all he could do to earn a living. What little money we had... Sorry! Ugh, yawning again. Uh, what little money we had for food he gave to me. He did anything he could to ensure my survival. Even at the expense of his own well-being. My father passed away in this town. Up until his last breath, he was only ever concerned about me. He held me in his arms and ran his fingers through my hair and an apologetic look on his face. If I had such a, if I had a, if I had a normal appearance, I'm sure life would have been much easier. Yeah, well. Randolph Bourne didn't seem to think that, you know, seemed to think that the lessons he learned from his experiences were, were worth the, I don't know, it's... I'll link to Randolph Bourne's The Handicapped in the description down below, so you can, you can read it for yourself. Um, uh, he was always telling me how sorry uh, he was for making life so hard, even though it's not his fault that they look like this. I disdain the Rhodes family for putting us, no, for putting my father through such hardship. I imagine that you, I imagined you were still li living in decadence, acting as though nothing had ever happened. No, you wouldn't even care about the fate of one little painter. I always meant nothing to you. So I decided to bring misfortune upon you. That's why you tried to kill me. In truth, I wanted to take his, your father's life, um, but your father spent so much time outside the mansion. And so, you're right, if they lost me, it would put my family in a very difficult position. And this is the whole of my tale. You now know about my father and how I feel about you. Having, having told you of the blackness in my heart, I cannot go on living like nothing has changed. Please give me punishment. Why? Why would you have me put the one I love through any more misery? I... I am not fit for your affection. Uh, not only because I am not aristocratic, or because every time I spoke with you, I did so holding this darkness in my heart. Does that not unnerve you? At the end, it was my family's actions that caused you so much suffering. Uh, would, that your father, would that your father was still alive, perhaps I could have done something. I'm sorry. Besides, you hesitated. You didn't actually kill me. What am I even to punish you for? I mean, I was going to say attempted murder is still, you know, a crime and bad. In, in most circumstances, um, almost all circumstances, but, um, but, um, I don't, I would, would this even, like, legally, would this even count as attempted murder? Um, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but as you said, you had countless opportunities, um, uh, but you could not bring yourself to do it. Tell me, why couldn't you kill me? Because I, if, if it's because I, I've given you enough reason to have even the slightest bit of interest in me, Nothing was as I envisioned it. What? I assume the residents of Rose Manor would be cold. People who believe that wealth would make matters above all. Well, most of them are. Um, but on the night of the storm, um, your mother was the first one to extend her hand to me. I arrived at this mansion disguised as a beggar. Actually, disguised is not the right word. As many as I only survived on the generosity of others. Your mother did not send me away when she saw me. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. So it was my mother's doing. I could scare... Yeah, well, she... You know, didn't just take you in and, you know... It wasn't altruism. <laughs> Certainly better than being out on the streets, but, you know... You can't have a housing market and no homeless people. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll back away from this now. Um, I could scarcely believe uh, she would invite a stranger into her home. Uh, she would treat a stranger with such compassion. Uh, perhaps she knew who my father was. Um, but I had never met any of you before, so she simply must be that kind-hearted a woman. And your mother continued to treat me with kindness, despite my disquieting appearance in the darkness of my heart. In time, I began to grow less and less sure of myself. Uh, well, I would argue that, you know, if you're going, if you're going, um, if you're going to, you know, do practices of the deed or whatever, you really need to, like, have some sort of, um, you, you know, this video's gonna get, gonna get shut down, holy crap. Um, um... But if you're going to do it, you know, you have to have some sort of, you need to, frankly, you should come to terms with the humanity of the person you are targeting, you know, um, and, and then you should decide whether it's still worth it. Anyway, okay, moving on. Um, 
Uh, was, was what I meant to do truly right? Were the things I felt truly justified? Um, but it was a certain fact that my father was here and that he had been chased out. So I decided that I should take your life, put an end to everything before I wavered any further. And then, and then, and then you were too kind to me. It's all your fault. Uh, because you laugh with such affection, because you make give me smiles like that, because you say the things you say, you... I'm sorry. No, no, don't apologize. I'm so happy to hear that, despite uh, the unusual circumstances. Please don't say you want to leave. Don't ask me to punish you. I couldn't do anything for your father, but at least... I wanted you to do something for the daughter he cared for so dearly. You're far too kind-hearted. I'll be happier with you around. You can become a real aristocrat. Hey, um, hey, Mel? Uh... It's great that you care for her and you're not as much of a dick as your father. But maybe instead of just helping the, you, this one chick you... No, I shouldn't say chick. This one woman you really care about, you know, maybe you should, I don't know, redistribute your wealth, you know, to so that people, like, everyone can, uh, you know, like, there are certain rich people in America today who have the money to end homelessness and still be billionaires. Anyway, um... Uh, there are families uh, that would be willing to adopt you, especially uh, knowing it, it would bring them ties to the Rhodes family in the near future. Are you saying, um, as long as you're okay with that, of course? I don't understand how you could possibly say that. I have my hand around your neck even as we speak. It seems reasonable enough to me. I'm desperately looking for some way to not have to lose you. But I, I couldn't, I don't know any etiquette or social customs. How could I you can learn all of that? You're pretty naturally graceful. You'll do just fine. Um... You're such an aristocrat, Lord Mel. What? The way you can come up with compliments so easily. Oh, only for you. Now this is my poetry has the most charm of the dissertation. I don't understand theater. It puts me to sleep. Okay, that's not relatable. I do not relate to that as 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 me refer as as referencing two Broadway shows I've seen is probably proven. Um Uh you laugh, thank goodness. Ah, keep smiling, you don't have to stop. The smile on your face is a smile of mine. No matter how deep the darkness has taken root in your heart, it can always be removed. I believe people are capable of forging their own futures. Okay, Lucina. <laughs> what do you say we go to the theater sometime? I promise I won't sleep through it. At the private theater, we can get seats at the far end of the second floor, so we don't have to stand. Oh yeah, this is, that's back when you um, had when the peasant folk had to stand and watch things. Actually, I do want to visit the Globe Theater, like the recreation they, they made in London. And actually, I've heard it's actually more fun to um, to stand there because, you know, because, you know, uh, it's, it's a un more unconventional theater experience. Anyway, um, they would have, they, they would be pretty lavish seats. It would give you a chance to experience a noble life. But please don't be shy. I can have clothes prepared for you. I'll ask one of the maids who can keep a secret. Say the one with the black hair. She kind of scares me, though. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to say. How could you so such so show such compassion for me? I tried to inflict harm upon you. Am I allowed to feel such joy? For every, every day I suffer, a day of happiness. That's how it has to be. Stand by my side. He softly whispered the girl's name. It is interesting how they're not they're going out of their way to not name give the names of even in, like in dialogue they exit out. You know, um, assuming this is the way. But you know, like there are assuming that this is. That she is the character they were talking about earlier. Um, um, but regardless, there are still characters whose names that you're just refusing not to say. To say, I'm sure that'll be relevant later. Um, but in time, she squeezed them together and made a smile. Uh, he wrapped his arms around her unbelievably slender, frail, fla frail frame, holding her tight in an affectionate embrace. Then he approached me the next day. He explained to me the course of events and then asked me to dress her up more beautifully than any other noble girl had ever been. She was already a very pretty girl, so even with that much effort on my part, simply putting her in a dress, she radiated beauty. I was quite partial to her smile, so I agreed to help, thinking that if it would lead to her happiness, I could not ask for anything more. Never anticipated, anticipated what would happen next, though. I have a vague idea of what happens next, and it's a doozy. Perhaps my hopes were unreasonable after all. Misfortune dwells upon everyone who lives within Rose Manor. No, no, no. You love the theater, so don't look so cross. It's interesting how there's not a portrait for the the um oh, um the oh it's not oh that's Arthur, the guy she hates, for debatably valid reasons or not. Um, she was quite clearly in a foul mood. 
will not stand for this. And I should have to marry a man as disagreeable as Arthur. I mean, yeah, she, she, uh, just to be clear, when I say, you know, um, her hatred of, of, um, of Mel, of Arthur is debatable, debatably valid or not, you know, okay, I do love this song. Um, it says this kind of, you know, old, you know, old school choir sound. Anyway, um, uh, it kind of sounds like Carol of the Bells. Anyway, um, but the, um, the, I'm just saying, like, like, she is 100% within it, like, she, sh or she should be 100%, you know, like, everyone should, like, accept that she doesn't want to marry this guy, obviously, you know, like, but, like, he just, I don't know, he doesn't, it doesn't sound like, he, from what is described in him, he doesn't sound like he deserves the hatred. I'm sure he's gonna do something awful, like, in the next couple paragraphs, um, on any other occasion, she would have snubbed an invitation from any man who was not male. But she had little say in the matter. She was, for lack of a better word, forced to go out with him. Oh, how fiercely she had fought against it. She had shoved aside the Abigail, trying to fasten her course, and Jesus Christ, Nellie! What the fuck? Uh, like, don't... Like, as a general rule of thumb, if you're angry about something, don't attack... Don't bring out your anger on, um, on someone who has less power than you because you can't go after the people who actually have power over you, you know? Looking at you, turfs. Um, anyway. Um, uh, it required the, the combined effort of, the combined efforts of several of us to get her ready and out the door for her date. Come now, you should at least pretend you're, okay, yeah, that's a dick thing to say. Um, or do you want people to think we don't get along? Do we get along? Well, I want to for what it's worth. I mean, I don't know, it's, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm sure he's, like, smarmy and a dick, but... Again, like, it's not that he's not... It's not that he's, like, likable. It's just more like... Her hatred of him seems disproportionate, you know? And it's not... Like, she hated him before she was being forced to... To, you know, um... For, forced to accept his courtship, shall we say. Um, are you really gonna be like that? I went out of my way to take you to your favorite play... So you do is be a little kinder to me. What's it called again? Romeo and Juliet? It's been running for six and seven years now. Family like yours or mine could pay to have a brand new script written. So why should we have to see an old play with a theater full of commoners? Ugh. Maybe it'd be private, but even so. Ugh. I'd rather just... Oh yeah, Arthur also seems... I mean... I mean, Arthur also seems to think freedom is something he can give or take on a whim. Um, <laughs> I'd rather j just have a show put on, on at my estate. Stop talking already! Why should I... Why should I have to marry someone like you? I have absolutely no desire to marry you. Whatever it takes, I will put a stop to this. I will talk to Father as many times as I must. Please don't make a scene, such a scene. It's shameful. Hey, hey, Nelly. Hey, Nelly. Um, you can just leave? You could just leave, you know? Um, your father, I mean, frankly, her father would probably go after her, but, you know, isn't she, but, but isn't that, isn't that still better than just asking, like, just hoping he'll change his mind? Anyway. Uh, besides, our families are hardly strangers to one another. Try as you might, I doubt you can get rid of me. No matter what you say, you can't break this engagement. You don't. Your parents gave you too much freedom, and look what a spoiled little girl you became because. No! Your parents, like. I don't know how to, like. Her parents gave her too much power and too little freedom. Is what I'll, is, is, I guess, how, is the best way I can sum up that shortly. Um, uh, oh, get off your high horse. No, you're the one on the high horse, Nelly. I'm not even going to say what he... Okay, yeah, fuck this guy. Never mind. Never mind. Fuck this guy. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not even going to say what he says. It's just it's, you know, ugh, gross. Um, uh... She used to act like a lady. Oh my god. She always acts. She was, she was like, she's not acting any different, you asshole. You just don't like, you just don't like her. Anyway. How dare you talk about, yeah, anyway. Wait, you think princesses have a say in, okay, this is. I don't know, this is interesting, this is, I actually don't hate this arranged marriage story as much as I thought I would. I mean, it's, it's weird because it's like, um, yeah, Nellie's 
kind of a, like, has some serious issues, and is kind, she is, I mean, I've ranted about her, the way she treats the people that are under her for some reason, you know, um, but she's also, like, doesn't deserve this, you know, anyway, um, <sighs> no, I haven't even, Jesus Christ, okay, fuck you, fuck this guy, never mind. Holy crap. You really... Uh, Mel would probably have a better chance of convincing your father than you would, because he, you know, respects Mel more, probably. But, um... I also don't think he would inherently listen. <laughs> For fuck's sake. You're a fool. Um, I... You'll be fine, don't be shy. But so many people are, are looking at... Oh yeah, that, I, that's relatable. Uh, that's because you're gorgeous. No, it's because I look strange. I assure you that's not the case. It is true you have an unusual appearance. Right now, the unique color of your hair, your skin, and your eyes all start to accentuate your beauty. You sound like a prince lord, Mel. <laughs> you think so? I mean, I did say to be a stand-in prince for you, but... Well, what did she say there? Um, uh, come on. Um, uh, I should joke about Taylor Swift. Remember and Juliet song here. I'm not, I don't. I, I used to hate Taylor Swift, you know, back when, like, in like 2008, when I felt obligated to hate her, and now I just, I don't care. I, I am aggressively, um, what's the word? Apathetic about Taylor Swift and her music. Um,. Uh, let's see. I think so. I mean, it's a, you're a wonderful prince. I'll just stand in. Which makes you my princess then. I don't... I right, supposed to say, yes, I am there. You're going to make me sad. Okay, that was kind of a dickish thing to say, too, Mel. Yeah, I guess, uh... He, he's... Wait. Okay. I'm not gonna say what he said there. My impression is that he was joking? <laughs> But I'm not sure, and that's kind of a problem. Um, what am I supposed to be doing? Nothing in particular, just sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, but there is one thing, yes? I started dozing off, could you maybe wake me up? <laughs> um... Uh, <laughs> ne what? Dearest Mel? Nelly? Dearest Mel, why are you, what are you doing here? I, I asked her to join me. Something to get worked up over. It is. It absolutely is. How many times did they ask you to come here with me and you wouldn't? You even like theater, dearest man. You brought her? You're right. I'm not especially fond of plays, but I wanted her to be able to see one. Why are you making such a big deal out of this, Nellie? She's not suitable for you. What? She isn't good enough for you. Why would you choose her? She's creepy and you have no idea where she came from. Oh, no, he does. He does. <laughs> for once, Nellie's the one who's not informed of, of an interaction regarding her. You don't even know her family is. I do. What? Uh, Lord Mel, it's fine. You just stay quiet. Uh, like the other maids, she came from a respectable house. I looked into it. However, circumstances prevent me from telling you what house it is. What? No, you're lying. That can't be. She's... She does... Well, she doesn't act like a lady. She lacks etiquette and probably can't even dance. Isn't that the thing Arthur was just saying about you, Nelly? It's like, everyone in this... <laughs> everyone in this, except for the white-haired girl and kind of Mel, are just like... Ah! <laughs> So we leave someone like hers from a good house? Have already, Nelly. Okay, for a second I thought this was like blood or something, just because of the background. No, you yelled at me. You have my word. You don't have to worry about her. Please stay out of this, Nelly. This isn't any of your business if I spend time with her, is it? But, but, dear Mel, you stop hanging all over me, Nelly, and find someone for. Wait, what are you doing at the theater? Are you here alone? Oh, yes, dear Mel, about that. I have a favor to ask you. I've been waiting to talk to you about it this since yesterday. I haven't seen you at all. Settle down, Nelly. What is it? Father had me engaged without consulting me, and he picked Arthur, that disagreeable little... Oh, right, Dad. I already know. What? I heard of him, Father. That reminds me, you didn't show up at breakfast this morning. I see now. It was because of your engagement. Dear Smell, is that you're here with today? In that case, you should go back... Okay. No. Fuck. Okay, I'm not going to say fuck you to Mel, but, um... Dick move, dude. Don't... I'm wasting the time this. You knew I didn't want to get married, Nell, so Why? Why didn't you talk father out of it? Because it's your time, Nelly. 
Anyone else? Someone else you'd rather be with William Shatner? Okay, nope. No, nope. Mel, you also think freedom is something you can give or take on a whim. You're all like imprisoning each other and imprisoning the masses below you. It's like, Jesus Christ. Um, Prince, all, um, doesn't he? I just, uh, I just for me, dear Mel. You stay out of this. It's all your fault. You should have played your little tricks on him. Okay. I want you to put this rat do this I told you I've had enough Oh fuck. Okay. Did you did he hit her? Did he like fucking hit her? Okay, fuck you, Mel. Seriously, not cool. Him being angry, I totally get, but like contain yourself! Okay. Again, I can understand him being frustrated at Melly, but she's also like again, Arthur's a gigantic prick who doesn't respect her at all. Like, I actually find myself sympathizing with Nelly here much more than I remember. I didn't remember the scene at all. Um. She's like, what, 15, 16? I mean, well, Romeo and Juliet is, you know, has similar, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't blame yourself, it's not your fault if you had, I, I mentioned earlier how I think about Ro Ro why, how I think Romeo and Juliet works better as a tragedy about the two families, not the star-crossed lovers, right? I think I did, and I'm not gonna, I've already gone on enough rants and tangents here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, not delve into that further. I mean, you were close, well, yeah, we're siblings, we're close, but nothing more. Who care about Nellie and enjoy spending time with her? She's my sister, nothing more. Well, Nellie might not think so. No, I, I imagine she left her betrothed behind without saying anything, so I'm going to go apologize soon. We have to keep up with the appearance and stay around back. No, nope, 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 nope. Fuck you, Mel. Jesus fucking Christ. Your thoughts on the tale so far? Um, they were both rich assholes. <laughs> Frankly, Mel is, I still think, less of a rich asshole because he at least doesn't, like, his, because I think his anger towards Nelly is understandable and, um, and he doesn't, from what we see in the tale, um, he doesn't treat other people as, as consistently badly as Nelly does, but also, in this scene in particular, he is definitely in the wrong. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what the fuck, Mel? I think, hmm, yeah, uh, well, uh, fiance behind, uh, well, yeah, I don't think Mel was, ironically, I don't, I disagree, I don't think Mel was right in that scene at all, you know, like, I feel like, honestly, I feel like if he knew the truth about how... Okay, the, 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 the name of the, ep of the episode I wanted, the subtitle, I'm not sure if this would actually fit in, in, on a YouTube you know, title, but I wanted to do something like, um, like, uh, Nellie really wishes she was a Hopsburg or something, or and whatnot. Um, um, so, that's, um, uh, that's... Um, how do I, how do I put this? Um, that's some, ah, um, uh, um, yeah, so, an isolated existence, almost like the white haired girl. Again, as much as I, as much as, as much as some of her actions I find frankly reprehensible, um, and as, as unhealthy as a, as a, um, as unhealthy as a relationship she has with, um, with Nell, I think she's, I, I can't help but feel sorry for her, and, yeah, anyway, um, the decor in the room appeared blurry through her damp eyes. Uh, members of the day, she 
Had it decorated, played back in her mind with crystal clarity. Oh, yeah, she also said, um, she was also crying. Why? Why won't you help me, Mel? Why won't you take my side? She told me she had no feelings for you. That liar, that liar. Well, yeah. No. Like, she, well, okay, yeah, she technically lied there, but if she was, if you were on equal footing, she probably would have told you the truth. But she knew, she could probably tell that you, there was an answer you really wanted to hear, and if you didn't like the answer, you probably would have freaked out. She let her emotions run wild, breaking uh, glass craftwork, silver plates designed by famous foreign artisans, flower vases, or vases, all that sort of thing. As though a beast had been let loose in her bedchamber. Interesting language, um, considering the next chapter. Um, uh, the vase uh, she tossed shattered against the painting hanging on the wall, spraying water, porcelain, and roses in every direction. It's the portrait she adored so dearly of her and her brother. Ah! And in what appeared to her like a metaphor for her life, the frame fell off its mounting and came crashing to the floor. Nellie darted over and scooped it up. The frame had broken, but the painting inside was unharmed. Whew. I was afraid some 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 art was destroyed. Um, the two uh, smiling children were still the very image of happiness, and several inseparable siblings gently holding one another's hand. My prince is no more. Though in her present state of mind, the image of happiness brought her nothing but misery. Yeah. The worst she felt, a very wise woman once said, um, when you're, uh, what, what was the exact phrasing? When you're, when you're, when you're feel, feeling sad, a happy song makes you feel like you're being bullshitted or something. Um, I can't remember the exact word. I'm paraphrasing contrapoints. Um, and the worse she felt, the more frustrated she grew at the smiling girl and kind boy of her past. The princess is no more either. You're not a princess anymore, Nellie. Some other woman has taken your place. I trusted you, Mel. I believe you would always be there for me. Well, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, he's he's probably... I mean, like... Again, it's it's so... The water he's here are so muddy because, like... While he... Like, he was undeniably behaved worse in the, in the last scene than she did. He She also just, like... Can't expect him to just, like be living with her all the time like anyway um it's painting it's nothing but a lie it's not the real mel it's not the real me you can't lie, lie oh is it the, is the audio mean that she's like ripping it up everybody that i never had a brother this painting she was like she was like the, the i wish i was never born scene in it's a wonderful life um although this ending is gonna be considerably different than that movie um, in a fit of emotional distress, she, crashed, she scratched feverishly at the painting that once considered she once considered precious. Oh, never mind, the art is getting destroyed. Oh, that's sad. Um, she put more force into her fingers than she or perhaps anyone might have imagined she could. Flakes of paint began falling off the canvas, and in time she noticed something peculiar. Huh? Oh, I forgot about this. What? Is this writing? Something's hidden beneath the paint. Just a little more. A date. Why would this not be hidden? What could it be for? Completed May 1587. 1587. She read a lot of the faded stretch of handwriting. Just staring briefly at the text. So that's like before she was born. That that was the painting that her... Uh, how could this have been painted 16 years ago? Wasn't even born yet then. And Mel would have been just a baby. So that was uh, the white-haired girl's father. Um, is this not me? Is this not Mel? There's still more writing. Urged only by her rapidly pounding heart, Nellie furiously scratched away at the painting. Even as her clean pink fingernails was soiled with fragments of paint and blood, she did not stop. She was so overwhelmed by the trepidation that she could not stop. She had a horrible premonition that something was about to happen, something indescribable and comprehensible. This is how I envision your son and our unborn daughter might look several years from now. Oh, fuck. Is that... Is she really, is she like, is Nellie the, uh, the white-haired girl's half-sister? Her son and our unborn daughter. So this is a painting of the future. It really is of me and Mel. No, use your head, Stu, but I'm only 14, 16, yeah. Could not have even been in sign mother. But then, but then who is this? Who's that holding Mel's hand? Who's that with my brother? More, more there has to be. Ow! Found it! There's more writing. I have to know, what is this? Calm down, calm down, Nelly. There's nothing something to get worked up over. I'm sure it's nothing. Oh no, this is something. Um, calm down and read. There's nothing to worry about. 
If our unborn child, this is what the writing of the painting said. I completely, there's so much of this I forgot about and I actually find it, like, this is more compelling than I remember and I feel like there's more to talk about. Um, For our unborn child does not have your hair color, I guess this is one reason why they keep mentioning the hair color, you will probably not be able to take her in as your own. I will be punished and my life made miserable. And so I pray that this child might have flaxen hair. Though, is it a sin to wish that she has she has in her a trace of me? I mean, can, a, can an action be a sin? Anyway, I do hope it is a girl. What am I reading? I don't get it. Someone, someone tell me. So, painting from 16 years ago. Hair color is sin. I do hope it is a girl. So she's not. I completely forgot about that. Holy crap. Um, what's the the sounds? Yes? It's Nelly, you let me in. Lady Nelly? Oh, you changed out of your dress. That's a shame. It looked nice on you. Hee hee hee. And it did look so nice. Almost like you were a princess. Um, Lady Nelly? Say, I've got a question for you. Do you mind? By, by all means, what kind of hair does your father have? Beg your pardon? Did you not hear me? Should I repeat the question? No, I assumed it would be about Lord Mel. I'm just so curious about where you got that white color from. I my my father was more tan than my yeah, um her that's not how albinism works, Nelly. Mm. Assuming she is actually albino, I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, my father was more tan than white. I didn't hear my, my paleness from anyone. I asked about your father's hair color. Why would you want to? No reason you can't tell me, is there? Um, had white hair. That was simply because he was an older man. I don't know. I think he was born with. <laughs> Lady Nelly? <laughs> hey, guess what? I figured it out. I figured it all out. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like getting into the act, like the character now, but I guess I am. <laughs> and it was so simple. There's only one difference between you and me. Thing that Mel fell for is why do you have those? No, stay back. Jeez. Ah, we have finally reached this point in the tale. If your memory is been refreshed, then we can return to the mansion immediately. Very well, then. If you insist, we shall proceed with the story. Yeah, what the fuck. It was a stormy night, much like the one the white-haired girl had first arrived on. It was as quiet as the curtain of the mansion, not a single light visible in the halls. The house sat and waited for the sun to peek over the horizon. The darkness is, generally speaking, something that rushes by like a gust of wind as we sleep. The flaxen-haired young man, too, lay in bed. Pale blue moonlight sporadically streaming uh, through the gaps in his, dra his drawn velvet curtains as he attempted to submit to slumber. Stepping difficulty drifting off, but as time trickled onward, he drew closer and closer to the arms of Morpheus. Are you going to take the red pill or the white pill? Or the blue pill? White pill? Red pill and the blue pill. Sorry, I couldn't help it, esteemed viewers. Um, mm, suddenly, he sensed a presence in the room, much like the one from those nights two weeks earlier. Is someone there? Answer me. Slender feminine figure pressed gently against his lips. There was no hostility in emotion, but rather a great deal of affection. Your silhouette, um, faintly visible in the dark room, was the same as that night. A flash of lightning shone through the drawn curtains. Illuminating her beautiful white hair. Several silky locks spilled over her, over her shoulders and brushed against Mel's cheeks. A couple of soft puffs of air tickled his face. Okay. Um, uh, there are four than I remember. Well, I suppose you are. So, so she's the white haired girl in that she's like. Does she like scalp the white haired girl? Jesus fucking Christ. Oh God! Uh, see, the difference is that um, the difference between you and him falling for you, uh, Nelly, and and falling for the white-haired girl is that the white-haired girl was like the Empire, the that kiss in the Empire Strikes Back that everyone points to as like, um, <laughs> you know. But it, it's a feeling. It's like a they didn't know at the time debatable anyway but you know like there's there's an innocence that there isn't with you and also and also just jesus fucking christ no dearest mel oh 
Oh fuck, that's that's horrifying. This is a very gothic type of thing, you know, like the, illuminating the darkness underneath all these pristine noble houses, you know. Not speak. Philip was sending above him certainly the white haired girls. Or was it? Because his next rooms were Get off me It wasn't very nice. The other in darkness, she slowly lifted her head, and then there was another flash of lightning. The heavy fabric of the curtains rustled, with bolts of light streaming between the gaps. Jesus Christ. Honestly, the only freaky thing about her is that is that expression. Max and Iris is glimmered. Though in the bluish white light, they took on a twinge of almost golden glow. You need to be so rough. This isn't the first time she's visited your bedchamber, is it, Mel? I'm not gonna I I don't feel comfortable, you know, saying some of these lines out loud. Um that was madness, Nelly. That's, um, not how this works. But again, like, she's emotionally unhinged is what I'm going to say. She's been, I don't know. Again, I can't help but feel bad for her because she's, she's been going through a lot. Anyway. Thanks, Lee. What happened to your hair? How did you get it that color here? You like my wig? Okay, this uh, this reaction from Mel I find to be, if not like justified from a um um like an on like a high minded you know distant moral perspective is at least like yeah this reaction is understandable <laughs> unlike at the theater. You sound like a Habsburg! <laughs> there she is, no but or not. That's not how this works, Nelly. I mean, okay, obviously this is messed up in a lot of ways, and it's, and it's, um, part, but I'm, I find myself wondering, how do I put this in a way that doesn't make it sound like I'm defending this, um, and defending an act that I, I'm pretty sure I can't say without YouTube get flagging it, um, <sighs> How abnormal would this be in this particular time period? Assuming historical accuracy, which is very hit and miss with this. You know, like, again, I make a lot of jokes about the Hopsburgs, or like, the fucking Ptolemies, holy crap. Um, I don't know, it's... Former queen was executed, is that actually... Is that... Actually, historical um, is there was there actually a queen who got executed for that of England? I don't know. Again, some of these some of these things are very specific and historically accurate, and some of it is just like let's pretend like the Gutenberg like go Gutenberg never existed. <laughs> what are you laughing about? What kind of deranged that nonsense is that? Half sister, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to like piece this together. No. No, they're both his half sister. Right, because um he and Oh uh, wait, hold on. How do I No Wait Hold on, I'm trying. I'm still trying to figure this out. So, I'm still not entirely. I know they're both blood related on some level. Then that's what I'll, that's what I'll stick on for now. I'm trying to like. Oh, this is again. This is like the Ptolemies. <laughs> Impossible. 
possibly remember it. Oh, yeah, he was a baby. So he's remembering what she's what the white haired girl told him. Um, uh, it wasn't very very bad. I mean, assuming it was consensual. Um, he definitely did not deserve to have his life ruined because of that. Again, assuming it was consensual. <laughs> Okay, so, so her, so her, so the white-haired girl was his, was the daughter of the painter and, and their mother, if I'm, if I'm remembering this correctly, so, if I'm interpreting this correctly, so Nelly is... So, so Mel is ne and Nellie are full siblings and um, half siblings with the um, white girl. So yeah. Um, it's it's not. Quite the opposite. I mean, Nellie's kind of making a bunch of insane sense. Wait, didn't the father also have some say in like in deciding whether or not to to let her stay? I don't know. A lot of sin and hell imagery going on and references and imagery going on here. Um, you know, I'm someone who really who who has listened, who has like rewatched Hunchback of Notre Dame and Hellfire so like way more times than I should have. It doesn't bother me. Jesus Christ. Not even once. So, I lose the little dough to me. She's not wrong. I'm actually going to read this out loud. Dear Snell, everyone just loves to dote on me. They're always telling me how pretty I am. Mother does, father does, and all the maids do too. I can do anything I want. So for me, acting like a spoiled child is the only form of rebellion I have. Not true, but it's probably the only one that ever occurred to you in that environment. Um, I don't have the kind of freedom you do, Mel. That is true. Um, I'm just a doll for the family to play with. When I visit, it's only ever for show, so it's not my fault that I don't have friends. Uh, there's some truth to that. I don't know. I'm, I'm hesitant to say that it was inevitable that she would only be fr like only be friends with Mel. But it is it is true that she probably would not have had many true friends. Or well, I would argue she doesn't have any true friends. Um. um yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, when, when, so when she found out about that, oh, we're back to the beginning, because, dear Snell, here again, reading such hard books. Sorry, I'm, like, all over the place. I've got, you know, like, an analysis fatigue, and I'm also just, like, trying to process this plot, and be like, okay, so... So, Nelly was more self-aware than I realized, and, like, again, like, I don't, I'm not, con I can't condone her actions, obviously. I, I can see how she would, you know, I wish she had a better way, frankly, she, like, needs a therapist. Um, like, I, or, or a therapist, or an intervention, or something else, you know, because, like, I don't know, I can her react again. Her reaction makes a kind of insane sense from an analytical perspective. Anyway, that's I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Um, 
I feel the need a lot of times, again, sorry to get personal again, but I feel the need to, like, preemptively defend myself or, like, then cover all my bases, you know? And at a certain point, I just had to be like, you know, if someone, if someone is like, hey, this sounds like you were implying that, you know, I would say, uh, I, I'll just say, no, I, want, I did not mean, I, I did not mean that, you know, anyway. Um, uh, I'm saying the pages. <laughs> it's like an old regular John Milton. Um, that's not good enough, damn it! Not good enough. So I, I do like this little touch of going back to an early, like a scene from the time period as the beginning, although probably not the, um, although probably not. I mean, I don't think we've seen this before, you know. And it suddenly, if you're not, if I'm assuming it, it makes sense in a different light, although I can't remember what it was like. I can't remember. There's a lot I can't remember when I first played this game. Um, um, I also played this game, like, I remember I played this game a lot in public. Like, in... Like, I, I remember I played this game a lot, like, while... You know, not like in public, like other people were watching, but just, like, while I was waiting for classes. And the environment might have not been ideal for that. Um... You know, this is my favorite season. It's just cold. There's so much rain. I can't stand it. Cold rain's the worst. It gets close to my birthday. The clouds go away. I just adore the sun. It's almost your birthday, isn't it? Have you decided what you're going to ask father for? Oh, uh, yeah. They want pretty dolls and shoes with sparkling gems. And I also want a pretty dress just like one the one's mother wears. <laughs> a list that long is asking a bit much, even for father. But dearest, no. I You probably can afford it. What I want the most is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really bought you for you the other day, and maybe the song they had written for you last year? Jesus Christ, dude. Maybe it be. Now I'm really curious. What's uh, so bad with you? There's the, the blood is, like, starting to show in the background. Say, dearest Mel. Um... Ordinarily, I would say these these like sudden jump like interruptions of an of an ideal I, an idyllic you know like a lot of times I find these like jump scare type of my idyllic scenes being interrupted like jarring and kind of annoying but in this case it feels thematically relevant and thus it, it feels like it makes more sense anyway um, <laughs> I'm not even gonna say that out loud because it really feels really ugh, in this um, in this setting. happy I think that we're getting close to the end oh not a curiosity so that you really cared so much about was she talking to Mel then like was she asking him I do remember this Frenzy Mel fled from the mansion even in early summer the night was cold Thank God it's worth raindrop piled them from head to toe. Cold rain! My arch nemesis. Also, my voice just did another weird thing. I don't know. My voice does a lot of weird stuff like this when I'm recording. Um, it causes him a little discomfort for a far greater ma maelstrom of pain that rampaged in his heart. After that night, the town took on a different appearance. Not simply for lack of illumination, but the people acted within it as well. It's not a suitable place for a young aristocratic man to go wandering unattended. To quote a man who I very who I very much disagree with, you know, a character, not a real person, who I very much disagree with, and also find it odd that this line that he said didn't cause him to have any more self reflection. Um, make uh, given it enough hunger, anyone will become a criminal. Again, paraphrasing. Um, it's it's Raza Ghoul from Batman Begins. <laughs> um, let's see, both of devils, but a beggar, thieves, criminals, and all manner of things are desirable. Yeah, and worst of all, the radicals. Uh, he simply went where his feet took him, and where he arrived was the church. Father, Father, God, God should be able to offer me counsel and answer all my questions. Uh, about the painting, about her, about another's feelings, not her lies, but the truth. So the door, you know it, it's true. As you might expect, the door was locked, and the priest showed no signs of responding to his calls. Instead of pouring rain, drowned at everything else. Yeah, the priest is probably asleep or something. I don't know. He looked like, oh, is that, does the priest know, did the priest know not just, when he said her ancestry, did he not just mean like whether she was, you know, common, air quotes, or like, you know, 
like what or was she did he like know who who her mother was um uh, the truth you wanted someone to tell me that's not true um I mean there's a difference between a sin and doing something wrong uh, I'm sure they needed to be false he would have gone to look at the painting uh, he was not was an indication of uncertainty he had a strong grip on him yeah Fragmented images of a white-haired painter fluttered through his, the back of his mind, but he desperately tried to shove them aside. What good is the church? What good is theology? What good is God? I, I mean, hey, I'm an atheistic Satanist, so you're asking the wrong guy to give you <laughs> to, to say something other than me. It's not that good. Uh, something moved me to the boy. Instead of immediately behind, I, I do, you know, I, I, I do, you know, see, I do see the value in religion for some people and it's just not for me you know i'm just i'm just being edgy <laughs> um something we knew the boy stood immediately behind him and cast his light ghost again he'd been so consumed in his own world that he had not noticed the person's presence until they were close enough to touch him what who are you they were just in tattered rags it is that old beggar were he a generous young man mel would have given the beggar something we're generous of course Oh boy, now you're going to be like that guy in like the one biblical story. I think I mentioned this in a video earlier. The one biblical story that actually has hell, um, that actually has hell and is not, in, like in the modern sense of the word, and it probably wasn't literally, you probably weren't literally supposed to think it was actually happening, going to happen afterwards. Anyway, it's the story of a guy, the guy, the one biblical story of someone who, who like is tortured in hell, it doesn't just get consumed by fire um, and die, you know, is that he was um uh is is the guy who didn't give money a rich man who didn't give money to a beggar just food for thought um let's see that was anything give him don't you dare touch me here's his hands his upward oh it was it was um the red-haired girl If you wanted something to believe your meager generosity made a difference, it is something of value. Yeah. I'm <laughs> billionaire from philanthropist, am I right? Actually, that's actually a different kind of insidious. That's not, that's just like PR and tax avoidance. Um, just to me so heavy, I'm afraid I'm a loser. So I'm gonna go around this corner. Are you apologizing? What if I was terrible and that I'm truly sorry? Didn't realize it was you. Yeah. Well, again, if you did, if you knew it was her, if it, like, for, yeah, it was horrible, and you only felt sorry when you saw it was someone you cared about. Oh yes, Nelly. She's not angry. Know everything. I don't know why I'm not reading it out loud right now. I think there's just a lot on my mind and whatnot. Um, uh, what are you? I don't know. You don't know for the best. Oh, it'll be all right. Let's go back. I'll make sure you never put in danger again. I beg you, stay with me. Go back, it's not a problem. Our lives ahead of us. Enough time this whole tragic mess will be behind us. Things will only get better from here. I'll be your prince, and like the one who took the girl to see the outside world. I should maybe consider what path my, my life is going down if I'm identifying so much with. Not so much with Mel anymore. Um, um, but, um, the, but, like, all these characters I see myself in not, don't tend to end up very well. Anyway. Story never had an ending. I never wrote that letter. I'm gonna turn the corner. Up like this, you know. 
I don't know. Oh, and of course the maid is there. There was likely your kindness. Thought they had haphazardly spreading a generosity. Came from your own desire to avoid pain for your own happiness. What should I have done? I can't take this. I mean, I'm sure... I'm sure I also have, you know, thought patterns like a less extreme version of Mel. I'm sure I sometimes... I'm not... <laughs> obviously not an aristocrat, but... I don't know. And smile... Happened then perhaps you can go on smiling your head. Regardless, you must follow the path you tread. It's your path alone. And with the chosen in that moment, you decided to run. Make the wrong choice in those moments, and you shall find yourself on the road to ruin. You've been better off not knowing. You've been off in the dark. Time is tranquil days to last. But your childhood must come to an end. I don't know! I... As a child, I was a stranger in a strange land, so... Kind of, I don't know. I don't understand what it's like to want your childhood to last. Um, at some point, your childhood must come to an end, and the ending may not be the one you anticipated. Send this world. You yearn for a world that would treat you with kindness. What should I do? What should I have done? Someone, please help me. You should return now. Because you're too long out here. I will be catch a cold. Now let us return. So now she's talking to me. Now let us return to our own time. I think that's where we're going to cut off for today, esteemed viewers. Um, uh, so yeah, I think we're back in the manor now. Sorry, I'm again, I'm not, you know, when you've been... How long has this video been going on? I think it's been... Um, here, I'll... Uh, I keep forgetting that that's not how I... It's not how I uh, save. Um... Uh, I, I, part of it is just like I am. I've been. Oh, the tranquil days. That's why it's called the chapter's called that. Um, uh, Trying to the mansion back. Um, uh, return to the entrance. There we go. Um, anyway, so yeah. I'm, how long has this been, video been going on for? Let me check. I'm messing up this beautiful song. <laughs> uh, wow, two hours. Oh yeah, definitely longer than normal. Uh, well, that'll be all for today, esteemed viewers. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you have something to say, let me know in the comments. Twitter, Letterboxd, Nexus.GG links, and that Randolph Bourne essay I talked about earlier in the description down below. Hopefully, assuming I remember. If not, let me know in the comments and I'll add it. Um, subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified of future videos. And, um... Um, something else. I don't know. Usual YouTube stuff. Um, you, I, I don't know. I've done this, I've done this a million times. If you've seen my other stuff, you, you'll know. And you probably, <laughs> honestly, you probably don't want to hear it again. Anyway, that'll be all for today, esteemed viewers. I'll see you next time on an, another episode of Jekyll's Not Great Plays, The Hassan Fate of Morgana. Um, goodbye.